10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And welcome to episode 49 of Stadium Connect North. Uh, today we have a special episode where we, we're interviewing the developers of Combinera. But before that, I would like to introduce my uh, co-host uh, as an old worker, co-worker of mine, who went into a Toronto <laughs> seminar, Mr. John Scar. <laughs> old <co -worker. laughs> How are you doing, John? Oh my gosh, boy. Ninja, you know, this yeah. week has just been full of uh i don't even know what to say shenanigans i would say yeah. here but uh oh my gosh uh, like normally we don't talk about things like silly things that happen and and rumors and and stuff like that but this week i mean <clears throat> we just have to address this thing and the only reason uh why that we're gonna address this is because stadia actually responded to it and shaka man, god bless her soul she is so awesome she had this amazing tweet. Uh, for those that don't know, there was uh, a rumor put out, a post on Facebook by just a random person saying uh, <clears throat> basically to the effect of an old co-worker of mine who is now a regional manager at Google uh, said that, you know, they had a, a large meeting in California over the weekend and that, you know, they're going to be closing down Stadia by the end of the summer. Well, of course, you know, People are, take this and start to run with it. And next thing you know, the killed by Google uh, Twitter account tweets it. And then, which I can't, I can't even believe this is, sites actually started picking up on this and reporting this. You know, yeah. people started taking this stuff as, as being fact. And it just blows my mind at the idiocy of this i'm going to keep it pg that that's what i'm going to say the idiocy of this so so let's take a look here um basically here we've got uh, the stadia twitter account and of course shaka behind it here says just a heads up an old co-worker of mine is now one of the social managers for google <laughs> they had a pretty large seminar in california this past weekend and Long story short, you can now play Wavetail at no additional cost on Stadia until August the 1st. So this is definitely taking a shot at that rumor and the fact that people would put any type of legitimacy behind that. Uh, it, it just really blows my mind to see like the lengths that people will go to just to put doubt in anyone's mind. And, and again, the fact, Ninja, that... This was just some random person saying, you know, that they know someone and they're saying there's no source, no validity at all. You know, it's kind of like back when we were young and it was saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, my dad's uncle works for Nintendo of Japan and we got the latest Super Mario Brothers that's not out here uh, in North America. You know, so it's just like it, it, it totally blows my mind. And again, the only reason we're talking about it is because Shaka came back with such an amazing response to it 
and it just set the community like laughing and awesome. So a big shout out to Shaka um, and the Stadia account here for, uh, you know, playing uh, with this silly rumor that's happened over this last week here. Yeah, definitely. Like, I couldn't believe how much popularity i mean this this post got it it just makes no sense to me <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, like i said it's just silly you know it's mm -hmm. just someone randomly says the stuff and and people believe it and they don't question it and it, they're like it, it, and then of course you know if stadia puts out a response saying no you know we're not shutting down then they say oh well of course they're gonna say that what a, you know do you expect yeah. so you can never win with the types of people that put these rumors and silliness out mm -hmm. so you know it is what it is but i thought you know it would be awesome if we started out the show to address that and just you know yeah point it out for the silliness that that it is Exactly. And now that this is out of the way, we're going to go ahead and <laughs> jump on the main event. So yeah, we got uh, two uh, developers here. Well, one developer and one artist, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, Combinera. So let me introduce you guys to Jacob and Phil here. How are you doing, Jacob? Doing well. How are you guys? Good, good. Thank you. Very exciting, excited to have you here. And uh, Phil, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Awesome, awesome. So uh, the first thing we would like to know is just uh, you know to, to for you guys to introduce yourself. You know, uh, for those who doesn't know who you are, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you know Joystick Game and uh, what's your uh, position. You know, what you do in these uh, company. Uh, well, I'm Jacob. I uh, am a I guess game designer, co-owner of Joystick Games or Joystick LLC. Um, that's a <laughs> company that Phil and I formed. Um, and creation of Combinera. Um, and I kind of play the role as a game designer. Uh, I made a uh, majority of the levels on Combinera, and Phil uh, is, you know, operates as the uh, lead artist and also co owner of Joystick. Well, Phil, I guess I introduced you, but go ahead. <laughs> right. Well, you, know, it's, it's, uh, you, do, you do one thing or you do the other. But yeah, I'm Phil. Uh, you know, I, I mostly focus on art. Um, and then I do a little bit of programming, um, but it's not my expertise. So definitely art is where I uh, spend most of my time. Nice. When you work with little companies, you kind of have multiple hats, right? Like you have to work into multiple uh, section. So um, you like, uh, Phil, you are not like a contractor, right? Like you're fully uh, employed with joystick games. Um, yeah, so I'm a co-owner with Jacob. We sort of okay. created the company together um, to sort of have, you know, uh, uh, a face behind Joyce or er, behind Combinera, um, <laughs> and we wanted that to be Joystick. Awesome. Is there any uh, other uh, person working with the company at the moment? How many employees do you guys have? Not technically an employee, but we have another guy who is just coming on uh, uh, to kind of take on lead programming. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of getting started on our, our next game, but you know, putting together our, our triforce of, yeah, uh, triforce. You know, developer talents, programming, <laughs> art and design. Nice. Well, we're already getting some cool information here, John, we're already hearing about an, an, another game coming from joystick. So, uh, we might get some more questions about that later. <laughs> so, uh, can you guess, get us a little bit of, of history on how did joystick, um, you know, come about? How did it form? Uh, Phil, you want to go on this one? Or? Yeah, sure. Um, so Jacob and I have known each other for a uh, super long time since we were real little, um, probably in ah. seventh grade or something like that. Um, so we've always talked about um, making games and, you know, we've, we've worked on different creative ideas together from, you know, trying to make little short films and uh, working on like music. Um, and, and songs and stuff like that together. Um, and so then it, we got to the point where I started working at Graphite Lab, um, the studio that um, Joystick partnered with for developing Combinera. And um, I was getting more involved in, in, you know, the game industry and learning a lot more about how to make games. And, uh, you know, I was trying to rope Jacob in and sort of bring him into the fold. Um, and so we started, we decided we wanted to start, you know, making stuff together. And that's sort of 
how joystick uh, sort of formed. Ah, oh, very interesting. Uh, before I jump on the next question, I just want to interrupt this and just see what some people say in the chat. They say that Phil has a really sweet beard <laughs> and uh, Bjorn here is agreeing. He says, uh, great beard. So uh, there you go, so, some good compliments. I don't know if it's because they want to get some 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 you know dig some information out of you guys or or, or if it's true but uh, <laughs> very nice right. compliment from the chat try to butter <laughs> buttering them up first right before <laughs> yeah, they yeah, ask yeah. tough questions exactly right <laughs> so uh, it's interesting that you guys uh you know partnered up with Gra uh graphite lab so how how was it to work with them how, you know did you guys enjoy it did, did it you know did you guys have a good chemistry between them and you yeah, Jacob, if you want to talk about that, you worked with more people on the team um, with the designers and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Like, this was my first uh, foyer, I guess, uh, into the video game world, right? So, I was, because I, I was graduating whenever um, this kind of came, whenever uh, we started working on Combinera, um, I was on a different track. And, um, but I jumped in, you know, Common Air started going. Uh, it got picked up by Atari and we, you know, partnered with Graphite Lab. So I kind of came onto the team and I, you know, it was interesting as, you know, first game, I got to act as, you know, lead designer kind of, and I had a couple guys kind of, I guess, working under me or in tandem with me, making levels and kind of following my direction. And, you know, Phil and I both kind of retained, you know, creative direction though we had a few people working with us. So it was kind of interesting for your very first, like, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, time, you know, working on games at all to be in charge of multiple people and kind of giving direction to people whenever you're still trying to learn everything. So it, but it, I think it worked really well. A lot of people on the graphite uh, lab side said they had a really good time and that it was a very smooth operation. Um, so that was pretty exciting, you know, you know, as someone who ended up taking on a bit of a uh, you know, director uh, side of things to hear that went smooth. It's, it's, it was really cool. It must have happened so fast because I can imagine like, oh yeah, like one day you're just working on your game, the day after you're the lead director of the whole operation, right? So uh, it must have uh, put a lot of, of uh, stress on your uh, on your end. Um, I'm a, I, I've been a software developer for, for 10 years now, and, and I can't even imagine being a lead developer yet. So <laughs> that's awesome to see, uh, you know, some skillful people like that, uh, joining the uh, gaming industry. It's really cool. Um, so can you tell us, uh, some of the platforms you have worked on and some of the games you have, you have worked on in the past or in the future, you know, like whichever you feel like talking about. <laughs> well, I started with Combinera, so I'll, I'll let Phil go. Yeah. Um, so everything that I worked on before Common Era was mobile. Um, so I worked on, uh, we did a lot of like licensed games uh, targeted at children. Um, so I did games for brands like LOL Surprise and Bratz. Um, oh. Okay. So we did like a Bratz Match 3 game. Um, that was pretty fun for me to work on. I got to do some, some 3D assets, uh, which was cool. Uh, it was my first time doing 3D. Um, nice outside of just like tinkering around um and then one of the first projects i got to work on as a professional was actually a roller coaster tycoon story which was no way. Uh, yeah cool. a partnership with graphite lab and atari for a roller coaster tycoon themed match three game so it had like a, a little story element and you would play match three levels and progress through the story um but that was kind of cool because i did my internship at graphite lab and that was like the first commercial project i ever got to produce art assets for which was really neat awesome. okay but yeah otherwise relatively um mostly like pc stuff just you know things that aren't published you know just messing around <laughs> with prototyping things on the desktop nice um so you, you worked for with LOL Surprise, was that published by Outright Games or was that? Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. Awesome. Cool. And I think uh, we've got a question here, Ninja. Um, that kind of ties in here before you go on to the next one from Dad Plays Games. He was wondering, how did you end up partnering, partnering with Atari? Yeah, so that's uh, kind of how I was talking about. Atari had that partnership with Graphite mm -hmm. Lab for mm -hmm. Roller Coaster Tycoon Story. 
So Jacob and I. Oh, um, Bill, sorry to interrupt you. I think your mic is, is blocked or something. Uh, we, we stopped hearing you well for some reason. Is uh, better now? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no um, worries. So Graphite Lab had that existing relationship with Atari from doing um, the story game. And uh, mm -hmm. Jacob and I worked on Common Era as this game jam project, and I just sort of sent it um, to everybody at work to play and try it out, sort of get their thoughts on it. And our studio director, um, he sort of, you know, prompted the question like, hey, do you guys want to do something more with this? Like, I'd love to share it around with my contacts. Um, and so he sent it off to a few different people and Atari ended up being the ones that were the most interested in. And uh, the partnership really made sense to us. So uh, that's how the, that relationship started. Nice. Awesome. Wow. Yes, yeah, so cool when uh, just, you know, contacts like that just genuinely uh, happens. So it's very cool. Yeah, Roller Coaster Tycoon, I like, I played so much of the first one as a kid. Like, it's really mm. cool to hear, uh, to hear that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk, uh, you know, uh, about uh, Combinera now, uh, you know, get our hands on, on, on the game. So can you tell us about it and what type of game it is uh, and some key features of the game? Yeah, it's a uh, puzzle platformer, so a 2D puzzle platformer. So like you're, you're going to get over 300 levels where you have to go uh, in order for them, where you have different obstacles to overcome. The goal of each level is to have a level together. The together. So each obstacle um, usually has a problem that uh, is something immune to it or is used to overcome. When two balls merge together, one has that immunity, one doesn't. They combine and make now the new ball shares with all those immunities um, or attributes. So it's a this puzzle of like how to navigate the train when all the balls are moving together at the same time. So you know, uh, yeah, I, I I just muted it. I didn't realize that they could. Yeah, I'm not hearing it for some reason. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so the balls all move. If you click left, you know, every ball goes left, you click right, every ball goes right. So you have to kind of navigate this terrain um, and not have any ball die um, while trying to combine them in the correct order and kind of do unique different tricks that you need. So that's, that's kind of like the main bits of the game. Um, I don't know if there's anything there in the uh, I think you hit it all pretty pretty good there. <laughs> awesome. The um, I don't know if you guys ever got that, but the game gives me a lot, a, a big vibe of uh, Archer McLean's uh, uh, Mercury, I think it's called, on PSP. It's one game that I really, really enjoyed when I was a kid, and I, I don't know if you guys heard someone say something like that. I, I look at your face, I guess not, right? Like, that, no? uh, so, so, Okay, Archer McLean's Mercury is basically a mercury ball, but you have to split it sometimes and you have to like change colors to combine other colors and stuff like that. And at the end, you have to like merge them back together. So uh, that's it, when I saw that trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to play this. It's like my childhood, you know? So uh, yeah, very cool to see that. So uh, I'm still seeing in the chat. Okay, so yeah, I guess uh, John removed the video. So I think you guys yeah. are hearing, hearing us well now, hopefully. But yeah, uh, so the next question that we have is uh, for the ach achievement hunters out there, will there be any achievements in the game? Oh yeah, we've got 35 achievements and uh, you know, nice. you know, a few hidden ones and uh, quite a number of uh, challenging ones as you progress through 300 increasingly more difficult levels. <laughs> but yeah, nice. there are definitely some, some achievements to overcome and discover. Very nice. I, I, yeah, I think they're going to enjoy that. People really enjoy, you know, arcade-ish style of achievements where, you know, you have to speed run and you have to, you know, achieve, achieve these type of things. So I think it's, people are really going to enjoy, enjoy these. Um, so let's go back in time a little bit. Uh, take us back and tell us how the idea for the game all began and the history up until release. So, uh, you know, how uh, did the idea come up? 
basically? Um, well, I'll kind of start us off. Uh, it kind of started out was in my final semester at the school I was going to, and this game jam was coming up. And I was like, you know what, let's, I want to make a game. And, you know, so Phil and I had been talking about this, so we, uh, we joined it in this game jam, was um, the Rackies Game Jam. Um, mm -hmm. You've heard of that before. And the uh, theme they gave us uh, to make a game with was Stronger Together, and we had a week to complete it. So Phil and I, you know, we got together, we brainstormed some ideas, and we were trying to figure out um, a really like doable for us who have kind of like limited programming abilities um, uh, to you know most doable idea that strongly fit the theme. So stronger together, we you know we kind of came up with this idea of what if there were you know objects, characters, and it eventually became you know the balls of the game that had to um, you know come together, and as they merge together, they would get stronger. So that's where like you know the, the main theme ties right into what we were kind of going after um and you know as we kind of developed the idea we're like okay so there's gonna be obstacles you have to overcome and they need to there needs to be a reason to combine them together so we said okay so different balls have different immunities and you have to kind of combine in the right order to get through it so right there we knew we had a a, a um some sort of puzzle game and um 2d platformer um kind of became the I don't know this the the medium medium that made sense mm -hmm. for, for what we were kind of going after and what we're more familiar with making anyway um and Phil can kind of take over from here yeah so i mean there was just sort of kind of came to us through the through our brainstorming process for the jam and um out of like simplicity right we wanted to have this like really tight core concept of something that we knew we could get done in the time that we had for the jam um because it was it was a week long like jacob said but you know it doesn't mean that we had a whole week's worth of time to work on it <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. and so i was i was working and, and jacob was you know deal, doing finals and all that good stuff um so we just sort of got to working on it um prototyping it out and uh we uh eventually got it finished for the jam thankfully um and sort of started to you know share it around with people who participated you know trying to get people to play it and rate it um, which was a super cool experience because um, it's not all the time that you get to see complete strangers play stuff that you make right a lot of times it's just the people close to you right um, and so we started getting a lot of really encouraging and positive feedback um, from our release of the game and we ended up placing i think in the top 40 games of the jam mm -hmm. Um, wow. which we were really excited about because um, there's yeah. so many entries. Uh, so then we started talking to each other about, hey, like this thing turned out pretty well. Like, why don't we keep moving forward on this project as a learning experience for us? Um, because we thought it would be a good one to gain experience on since it's it's not like a concept we've been dreaming about since we were kids or anything. You know, it's not like we would be super upset if it, you know, didn't go the way we wanted to or anything like that. So we thought it would be a really good learning experience for us. And it, it really has been, and it's provided a lot of opportunities for us to, to learn and grow as developers. Yeah. Game jam does a lot for, for smaller games, right? Like there's so many cool games that came out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I think on, on Google Stadia, we're currently looking forward to like three games from, from game jam. Uh, well, uh, plus, plus you guys, of course. Uh, yeah, we're looking for like a Bushido bots, uh, and, uh, our, our passing thoughts and, uh, battle Bayard, I think, but there's, like you said, there's so many games, I'm sure, you know, maybe, maybe these slip, slip out for you guys, but, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, so I'm going to pass, uh, the questions to John here, uh, who has okay. more questions. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, so Combinera, uh, was released back in April, April 7th, I believe, on a, a variety of different platforms on PlayStation, Xbox, uh, and Nintendo, of course, published by Atari. Um, but nothing was announced for Stadia at the time. Do you know, or, or could you maybe tell us, like, how the decision came about to bring Combinera to Stadia? Like, were, were you involved in that, or did you hear of talks or, or anything of that nature? Um, 
For this one, I mean, that was kind of where our partnership with Atari came in, where, you know, there's some of these relationships and some of these things that are going on kind of just put in the hands of and trust of uh, Atari. So I just noticed like Atari's, um, you know, they announced they're bringing in a number of games to Stadia and mm -hmm. um, we got to be included in that. So um, it's it was very much on the, the side of Atari that kind of was able to set this up and, um, you know, we can work on porting and um, doing that, but the initial talks and all that. Yeah, hmm. that's awesome. Um, so, with the game being built um, in, in Unity, did you like was were were you were you both like involved in bringing the game over to Stadia or like in any type of like porting process or or things like that? Uh, nothing like too extensive. A lot of it goes to the engineers, um, and that's okay. mostly on them. Um, Interesting. But, uh, you know, just if, if any issues come up, at, like uh, creatively or anything where something might need adjusted um, mm -hmm. or if there's any tweaks that need to be made on the visuals or anything like that, you know, that's the sort of stuff that we uh, step in and do. But the majority of the porting process is handled by the uh, engineering team. Okay. Um, so from, uh, we know Combinera uh, started out like its origins was in, was in the game jam. Was the, one of the requirements in there to use Unity or was that something that you both thought of because of the versatility of Unity across multiple different platforms? I mean, Phil had already been using Unity and there's just so many, and that's what I had um, started kind of going through some tutorials on was because it's like, you know, you can start at, by yourself free. And um, there's so many tutorials out there, um, like Brackies has been super useful um, and a number of you know, newer ones coming out uh, mm -hmm. also. So I think it was like just the initial accessibility of Unity mm -hmm. that really you know, uh, helped with everything. And then um, so far, it seems to be uh, that the engineers have found it to be like pretty accessible for porting to different, to different platforms. Nice. Um, just because nice. they kind of have some like um, within Unity, they have some tools for that. Nice, that's good to hear. Uh, so, a question, Jacob and Phil, um, before the announcement or or you know the agreement between uh, Atari and Google to bring Combinera and you know other games to Stadia, have either of you like were you familiar with Stadia? Prior to this, have you had a chance to try it? And if so, what what are your thoughts on Stadia and maybe cloud gaming in general? Should I start, Phil? Uh, yeah, if you want to, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, when, it, when Stadia was first announced, actually, I got super excited about it. So this was back when um, there was kind of division between, like, look at my friend groups, like, what platforms people are on and, like, just, you know, I was much younger then when they first announced so like affordability for like getting like mm -hmm. a pc it was ridiculous so i was very excited about stadia um and though i did not get my friends on board so then we ended up we went the playstation route and i just followed my friends because that's that's what i had to do um mm -hmm. and then um it kind of from there you know kind of fell off my radar uh and then since then, um, so I think I only did like try a free trial that, you know, earlier time. And then um, since this has happened, I have uh, got an Stadia account and I've played it. You know, I was playing through Rogue Book and since I've been hearing a lot about that game and just nice. Kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. Checking it's out. It's really uh, addicting. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. I was very interesting. I didn't expect it to be because I didn't, I didn't know what it was even going to. I just couldn't do things. It was pretty fun and it played well. So, um, nice. Um, so far, my, my experience has been pretty good. I, I mean, I really like the concept of just being able to plug in anywhere and just kind of go. It makes so yeah. much more sense. You don't need a big VP computer to run something. Um, right. I, yeah. I, I just, it, to me, that's what makes the most sense, especially as like our internet kind of becomes more and more accessible for high streams. It's, uh, that's my take on it. Thanks. Yeah, totally. I would I'd agree with that. Um, just like I, I'm very interested in the future of cloud gaming and where that goes just like um whether it's like complete cloud gaming um or even just like options that sort of take the the high stress 
um, elements of games and sort of do that processing on a different machine um, where it's that sort of hybrid approach. I think all of that stuff is really cool just to make more things accessible for more people, mm. right? That's like the beauty of it is that you don't have to, you know, upfront spend this huge amount of money just to get the right. best experience um, right. playing a game, which I think is super yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I mean, you know, ultimately your goal is to get your game on as many screens as you can. Right. So right. in front of as many different people, which I think like some of that gets lost, like in, you know, like the hardcore fans where they're seeing it, you're like, oh, no, like I only want this game available on PlayStation. And if it goes to PC or Xbox or Stadia, the developers are traders and guard, you know, like, <laughs> Like you just see like this really right. silliness and, and, and I'm thinking like, come on, like you can't be that naive is sure there could be timed exclusivity, right? You know, like, you know, a year, six months, three months, whatever. But then mm -hmm. again, like, like we said, like your ultimate goal is to get as many people in your game in front of as many people as you can, regardless of whatever platform it is, what, you know, mobile, console, cloud, whatever, Right. You know, so it, it, it's kind of silly when I when I see, you know, see stuff like that. But it's it's great to hear, you know, and that we've talked to many different developers and they all agree. You know, it's like getting your game on as many screens and as platforms as you can is the ultimate goal, because, you know, you can enjoy it. And, you know, like both of you had mentioned with cloud gaming, it just the some of those restrictions of having to have, you know, the expensive hardware or even like something dedicated to it like you know we can we'll be able to play your game on uh, a phone a tablet you know or on the tv if we want to or on a computer like and we can pick up wherever you know we left off so i think that's that's really awesome to hear and uh mm -hmm. super excited about the future of cloud gaming and and like i said really to be honest i think like some people have like a fear that if they accept cloud gaming, that their traditional way of playing games is going to go away, right? You know, so, you know, think, oh, well, you know, if, if I play in the cloud, then, you know, I'm not going to be able to have my physical disk to load onto my system. And, you know, then it just blows up from there. But that's a whole nother story. Right. Yeah. There's <laughs> um, definitely a beauty in both of them, for sure. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And I think some have the the mentality of it's like one or the other and not just both. Like they can both, you know, you know, coexist in 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 peace and you can still be friends with others who who like you know but anyways <laughs> we, we we won't go there um so Combinera, um as of right now it's set to launch uh on stadia in september do you know and again this might be an atari thing so if you don't know that's fine or you can't tell but do you know like Will it be included? Like, will it launch as a Stadia Pro game? Um, the intention is to be on Stadia Pro. Um, okay. So that's the intention. The you know the question is you know uh, when when is I don't I don't have the exact date in which you know Atari's planning on, on mm -hmm. bringing it to it or if, you know there's gonna be a time mm -hmm. where it's um, not pro for like you know. I don't know their their launch schedule. Okay, and I can't really, okay. you know, speak to that. But that's 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 our desire. That's, that's the <laughs> right. desire of the team at Graphite. That's the desire of the team at Joystick. Um, and to be on, I think Pro is where we want to be. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That that's great to hear because uh, Atari's first game, uh, Centipede, uh, recharged launched on Stadia July the first as a as a Pro game, and uh, I think it caught a lot of people off guard because we've seen. Ninja, like you could back me up on this. Like a lot of people, like really, like they love the challenge of the game and the leaderboards and those, you know, achievements and things like that. Where even there's a community uh, championship tournament going on right now, and one of those games actually is sent to be recharged. So you know, we have people who signed up from the community. They've got a week 
to do, you know, they have a challenge and who can get the highest score. And we always see, you know, back and forth, like so-and-so has this. And they're like, oh, no, you know, I've got to beat your score. So I think, you know, and it's great, again, to hear from, from you guys, like your ultimate goal is Stadia Pro. Because, again, that just lifts like another barrier as well. Um, you know, for people that might look look at certain games or indie games in general and be like, nah, I, I'm not going to pay 15 or $20. I'm not, I know, I really don't know. But if you've got Stadia Pro and you can claim it for free, right, you know, mm -hmm. include it with your, your subscription, I know that there's a lot of people that they've found games, you know, I never would have played this unless it was included with Stadia Pro, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. Hopefully, uh, Atari and Google have worked something out. I kind of have a feeling that that's going to be the case because it makes perfect yeah. sense. And then with all the new revenue sharing and things like that, like it seems to be like that's the way to go. It's a winner for both uh, you and the consumer itself. So fingers crossed that uh, that's that's what happens here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's see here. So I wanted to ask each of you, what advice would you give someone that's trying to get into the games industries under your, you know, like under your certain roles that, that you have now? Like if there's somebody watching here that says, you know, you know, I really want to be like an artist, like feel like this is something I would love to do or, you know, game designer or things like that. Like, are, is there any type of advice that you might give them uh, in order to help, you know, pursue that dream? Yeah, totally. I would say, um, honestly, for anything that you're, you're doing, especially in the game industry, is just to keep creating things, right? Um, I know it can be hard, um, especially if you're like searching for, for jobs and stuff like that, that you can put a lot of energy into it, but, it is important to always sort of keep that creativity flowing and to be working on projects no matter how big or small. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that, you know, people love to see whenever you're interviewing or, or showing off your portfolio or whatever, whenever people can see that you really, you know, are on fire for this um, and you have lots of ideas and things mm -hmm. to share. Um, it's really exciting for people and people want to work with, you know, people who have ideas and are excited to share them with others. So, like we heard we heard earlier on when we were talking to you like um you know you've both known each other for for quite a long time and you always wanted to get in in into you know making video games and stuff like that when back then when you were in grade seven or you know throughout those years was it always like did you have the inkling of becoming an artist or was it just like you somehow found your way into that role yeah i mean i I didn't think I was going to become a game artist. Um, so I, uh, when I was in high school, I took some, you know, advanced uh, programming courses um, and I took some uh, art classes and graphic mm -hmm. design. And I was sort of trying to decide what I wanted to do for college. Um, and I was between, you know, like software engineering and mm -hmm. graphic design or some sort of art. Um, and I decided um, that, you know, programming, I just, you know, it was too much like head against a tree cheese grater <laughs> where I was like, I don't want to do that all the time. I don't think I could, could handle it. Whereas I, I'm much more like liberated and like satisfied doing the art stuff. It comes to me a, a much more easily. Um, and so I thought I was just going to, you know, be a designer somewhere. Um, I was actually, uh, interactive design was my major. So I was sort of focused on like web design and motion graphics mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but our studio director is actually a professor at Maryville where I went to college. Um, mm -hmm. so I sort of, you know, just created a relationship with him, um, cause he mm -hmm. taught the motion graphics class and, you know, got to know him. Um, mm -hmm. he sort of suggested that I apply for the internship mm -hmm. at graphite lab. And that's kind of how I found my way into the industry. I wasn't necessarily looking to work in games, but once, uh, mm -hmm. once I got that taste and that experience, mm -hmm. um, I realized that it was a really fun place to be. So awesome. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, Jacob, what about you, Jake? Do you have any like advice that you would give somebody like, you know, like, so Combinera is your first game, right? Like as you were mentioning here. So, you know, 
like that that the passion again kind of like what we were talking with phil is like did you think is you know being the the game designer is that what you would always envisioned yourself or again you know is it something that you know circumstances led to you know where you are today yeah i mean my story is a little different so like i was at school i was on the pre-med track so i finished like a biology degree Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I was still at Tech for pre med. And, you know, I kind of finished my final year. But all through my life, you know, I'd kind of been like, I enjoyed creating things. So, I, you know, I write a lot of songs. That's like one of the things I do all the time is, you know, I, wow. I'm kind of just, I'm writing songs. That's, you know, I enjoy making things. I have kind of, um, Phil and I have kind of worked on like a short film or two and some other small, mm-hmm. like, creative things that, you know, some follow through to some degree, some not. But it's just like an interest um and video games was always a part of that um, and um so that's kind of like you know my final year at SLU where i went to school mm-hmm. i kind of was like i think i want to try pursuing um something more in the creative realms um where i kind of find more passions um mm-hmm. and that's kind of what led us to doing the game jam was like i was like i want to i want to try other things out um before i kind of go down any particular path and mm-hmm. you know so i just kind of did it and it's kind of that's kind of where it's put me here is you know it's like <laughs> you know i've always kind of worked on creative stuff not necessarily the right game. and um we were able to make something that was you know decent enough to like actually allow us to like get some backing <laughs> and, and actually bring it to a, a bigger picture so yeah. um that was my story so yeah. you know advice from that is you're not locked yep. into a path and if you want to try something else kind of just go and do it um yep. that's 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 kind of where you know i kind of stand is just even yeah try. <laughs> you don't really yeah, know yeah. no no that 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 that's great advice as at any time of either of your careers was there ever a time where you would kind of like second guess where maybe things weren't going as well as you thought they were or you came across like you know a big stumbling block that you kind of think well maybe i don't want to do this or any of that happened like did you guys ever ha- come across any scenario like that or um there's not necessarily any time where i've felt like i'm doing the wrong thing mm-hmm. uh, but there are times, you know, when you're like scrolling social media or something and you just like, you're yeah. looking at all these people. Like I follow tons of artists. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, sometimes it's very inspirational and sometimes it's like, Oh my gosh, their stuff they're making is just so good. And it's like, I'll never <laughs> make anything that good. Um, but you know, everybody has mm-hmm. their own journey and they, you know, develop at their own time. And, you know, you don't always know how long some of these people have been, you know, working on their craft and things like that. So it's, it's always important to remind yourself that like your journey is separate from everybody else's and like, Mm. you know, you move at your own pace and it's just all about improving from where you personally were, you know, a year ago, two years ago, whatever. Um, And as long as you set goals for yourself and try to make sure that you're improving and moving towards those, then I think Mm. that's the best thing that you can ask for. That's awesome. Alrighty, I think we're going to open it up to the chat now. I know I'm going to scroll back here. Uh, Dad Plays Games had a question earlier on. So for anyone else in the chat there, if you'd like to ask a question, just type it in the chat there here. Meanwhile, um, uh, oh, okay, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 I was going to go ahead and grab this here. So uh, Dad Plays Games, Bjorn says, Jacob and Phil, why the name Combinera? Seeing as is a Swedish word for combined, I can't help but wonder any connections to Sweden. Well, sorry to disappoint anyone, but it, there's no connections. We, you know, the main objective of the game is to combine, and we were kind of figuring out what this game was supposed to be. Uh, our original game name for the game in our uh, game jam days, because you know, it was just goofy, was Combal Nations. You know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> so it, you know, it kind of uh, you know we knew we needed to replace the name for another to fulfill it, you know, to its to its full agreement. Phil was kind of um, kind of exploring through different, um, you know, basically translating the word into different languages and just like looking for something that sounded well or sounded good. And there was um, I don't know, Phil, you kind of you kind of had done a 
few different things. Uh, yeah, I was just sort of it. looking around for inspiration on like what the name could be, and I just really mm -hmm. liked the way that Combinera sounded. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, it was it was close enough to like the English version of the word, right? Um, to where I think people can really understand what it is, and you know, it gives it the feeling of like it's a name of something, um, mm -hmm. as well as like you know, it, it tells you what you're doing. Um, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I own, I own some Ikea furniture as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you heard that here, Bjorn, uh, they are a really big fan of the Sweden language. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> um, while we're waiting for some other questions in the chat there, you'd mentioned that, um, you're starting or have started working on, uh, a new game. Is there anything that you could maybe give us hints on about it or maybe the type of game it is, or I'm not sure if you're allowed to, to talk about it at this point. Um, we don't want to get you in trouble. So, you know, definitely if, if you're not sure, um, you know, that's okay. We, we totally understand, but you know, I just thought we'd ask maybe, you know, for those interested in, Maybe what's coming next? Oh, I think Jacob might be frozen. <laughs> That's uh, his excuse. He's like, uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> cutting out. I'm cutting out. I can't, I can't speak. <laughs> I'll pull up his spot. Yeah, he's, he's back. He's back. Yeah, you're back. Uh, okay. I can't, I'm not gonna, I can't speak to anything on the Graphite Lab side. But on the joystick side, we, you know, we were, we're exploring into the, the roguelite. Realm of, oh, um, oh nice. We're, we're very much in the beginnings of that. Um, mm -hmm. Our side project kind of being done, um, kind of, I guess you'd say, like, off hours. Because, you know, again, like, Joystick is, is you know, me and Phil, and we have a guy who just joined on to the team programming, is it's kind of like uh, both Phil and I now work at Graphite Lab, too. So it's kind of like um, we're working on our side stuff to bring it, you know, to the picture while we're also kind of uh, on that journey with Graphite Lab. Um, so I can't really speak to Graphite Lab stuff, but joystick stuff, that's, uh, we're, we're working on that. But it's, you know, so progress and uh, yeah. not enough, and it's actually say much more than that's the realm we're, <laughs> we're going to next. That's nice because uh, today someone asked me, if you'd had to play a, a game 24 hours straight, what would it be? And I just told them it would be a roguelite because just because of the element of it's always different. Playing a mm -hmm. game like that 24 hours is, is the best, you know. Um, so, yeah, I see some, some questions in the chat now. And I just want to let you guys know also. Uh, so me and John were like, like real, really big suckers for Stadia. Like we, we know a lot of stuff. Like we dig out a lot of information. So if you guys have uh, questions towards maybe uh, development on, on Stadia or... Uh, you know, just questions towards Stadia in general, you know, feel free to ask us um, because, because we do, you know, talk a lot with the developers also in the back and, and things like that. So just, you know, just to uh, to let you guys know. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't have anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but yeah, you, you also have our contacts, right? So yeah, feel, feel yeah. free. We can get you in contact with other developers also if you have any, uh, you know, questions uh, on how things work and stuff like that. So, so it's always, a, you know, an open door an invitation for that yeah appreciate that <laughs> yeah yeah, awesome. yeah. Uh, uh, so, so yeah. yeah if you want to go ahead and, and start to highlight any of those think paul has a yep. question paul here is asking what old atari game would you bring back if you could <laughs> et is not allowed no no <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's a good question <laughs> They're all coming back already, right? So it's kind of hard to... Yeah, yeah I know, right, with the Recharge series. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We, we can we can go on, you know, give them time to think about it. And if... I think, when you, uh, come... you know, some some sort of new version of Adventure. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, like. yeah. Just because I feel like the, the technology has advanced so much and, like, we have so, so much content in that sort of space of that like an adventure top-down uh genre sort of deal um i think it, it could be pretty cool to sort of revamp that in a new modern way nice yeah awesome. very true 
got here some some answers also well, Pedro would like to have pitfall ones. yeah yeah a good one for sure uh okay so another question here from primo yonic uh what are you most excited about uh, within the game industry and your possible roles with it good question not sure specifically what primo is asking but i mean i can kind of speak to it if you feel like okay. you want to go, go for it first. <laughs> i mean my general just general my excitements right now is like you know i'm new to the industry so there's just so much i get to learn um you know phil and i are going to pax west um as kind of the first like you know nice. like representing joystick gonna you know check that out and, and try to connect with as many people as possible so you know right here if anyone's going to pax west and wants to, to connect with us uh you ping me on my social media or whatever it is you know gotta yep. <laughs> uh nice. but um you know kind of exploring the business side of things and trying to develop um the brand of joystick is kind of like it's going to be interesting and i you know building something of our own is just like you know having already done that with combat air and enjoying that so much i'm just excited for more games and then like building up a, a business to a company like that's that's what i'm excited for um totally yeah i would say just like meeting new people making those connections and carving out an identity for joystick in the space right um hopefully continuing to to produce you know games that are well received by people um and that you know people can become more familiar with joystick as a as a studio and sort of come to appreciate um our portfolio our portfolio as it expands nice it's, it's gonna be cool uh you know eventually to see younger developers uh you know take you guys as you know uh leaders of, of the industry i, I think I, i'm i'm looking at phil and i feel like this is something that he'd be looking forward to uh at a, <laughs> a, at a later you know date so oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. right yeah. being mentors and a yeah, mentor and, yeah exactly right yeah yeah mm -hmm. definitely totally. for sure that's awesome uh, got a cool question here from Marcus. It's a situation kind of a question. He's asking, you have almost unlimited compute, unlimited high bandwidth memory, millions of hit endpoint. Uh, what experience do you build? So basically, if you'd have like access to anything, what kind of game would you uh, be thinking of doing? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the real, the, it seems the limitation that really exists is like just the, the amount of like knowledge to to actually make the game. But like, I really love the the kind of RPG world of like Skyrim's and, and stuff like that. And having like a, I don't know, I feel like there's a there's a place for like a redefined MMO RPG. You know, like really taking a step away from what like you know World of Warcraft kind of like set as the standard and kind of building towards something that's more a lot more discovery based and unique experiences together with other people i've talked to Phil about this a ton he knows that he's like <laughs> they have huge dreams they're really big. <laughs> but there's there's something in there that i'm like you know i, I think would be really cool um, that's that, if i had unlimited all of those things and uh i guess talented you know builders uh, like programmers and, and designers and giant team and billions of dollars or whatever it takes to make a huge game like that that's what i would go <laughs> nice good answer <laughs> yeah. yeah oh my gosh that's awesome so i see uh Petter was asking about uh have they tried stadia that's something that we talked about earlier mostly we martinez got... making making a joke there there was so um, I don't know if, if you guys are aware. We again we talked about it a little bit at the very beginning of the show. There was like just some random person saying that Stadia is closing down by the end of the summer. So mostly Martinez was just me, you know, making a, a joke here. Do you know if Stadia is closing by winter? But that's just just yeah. funny. Um, Granite yeah. in the chat uh, was also asking uh, Jacob and Phil. Are you guys mostly a mouse and keyboard type of gamer or a controller type of gamer? We'll start with Phil. Uh, I typically go for controller if I if I can, um, but I'll use mouse and keyboard every now and again just to, to switch it up, keep me on my toes, I guess. Hmm. Nice. I, what about you, Jacob? I started mouse and keyboard, then I became 
all controller that went back to mouse and keyboard. So I'm kind of both now, but uh, oh, uh, there you go, hybrid but, gamers, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mouse and keyboard at the time, moment. Oh, okay. very nice. Um, I Ninja, I saw that there was someone in here. Gamer Mink was mentioning touch control. So what I think that they were talking about, um, I'm not sure if either of you are, are aware. Um, on Stadia, they have there's a feature. So if you're playing it on like a phone or a tablet, it's called Direct Touch. So you know, like, so if you don't have a controller, you can play just by like on the screen moving things around is that something that either of you are aware of and if so is that being implemented into combinera or maybe in the future i am <laughs> unsure if our the guy who um on graph at graphic lab who is doing the porting if mm -hmm. he has or not we, okay we do, like we do have we have set up uh common error for touch controls before because we are like on ios and it does work i mean we right we really only have two um two really movements you're doing right left and right and jump um mm -hmm. the the controls are pretty accessible and to do touch for that um isn't the craziest thing um it doesn't feel okay. as good as it does on a controller uh i can tell you that but uh that's my preferred way of playing common era but right. um hmm. i would have to check in on that if we are actually doing that or not well, uh, at least uh, you know it, it's it's a possibility. So even if it's not done at the moment, at least maybe we'll we'll see it at some point. Or but it's nice to know that you know it, it's it's supported. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we probably have to thank Unity for that because I I think Unity is pretty accessible in that in touch control, right? So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, it looks like Primo said he had a question earlier, but I don't see your earlier question, Primo. So if you maybe want to type it again, if we haven't already talked about it. Um, oh, okay. Here's the guy. Craig's got a question here. If you could work on any IP, what would you choose? Is there, do you have, do you have a, maybe like, you know, like a favorite game series that you would love to make an entry in, you know, of course, you know, regardless of, you know, money's no object, the size of the development, you know, all that good stuff, you know, the dream scenario. Right. Oh, that's, that's a really good question. I mean, there's probably, there's so many different answers I could give. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about one just because it's, it's been coming up recently, but I am a big fan of the skate franchise. Um, and I've seen a lot of stuff about skate four recently. Um, so I don't know, doing something with, with skate would be pretty cool. Just some sort of, uh, nice. something in the skate universe. Oh, skate. Oh, I was hearing skate. Okay. No, oh. skate would be cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's very, uh, man, I've never played the skates. I was a big fan of Tony Ox, uh, back in the day, but, uh, I skate, I, I remember trying the demo on PlayStation three. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't get used to the, you know, the joystick kickflip that you have to do and stuff. It's oh, so yeah. different, right? When you're so used to Tony Ox. But totally. uh, yeah, Skid has some pretty cool graffiti on the walls. So uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you could need some good graphic designer. Totally. <laughs> yeah. That's a, right? and, such a tough question, though. And I, I sunk a lot of hours recently into the well, past couple of years into Risk of Brain 2. They make another oh. game. Oh. Nice, yeah, very nice. I, I like that one. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, oh, that would be cool. So you said that uh, Jacob, that you're also a composer. Did you compose the soundtrack of Combinera? Nope, they did that actually. <laughs> yeah, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> roll, roll reversal, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience in composing the game? Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm not like super you know skilled in, in music or anything like that but it's something that i like to mess around with uh, every now and again like jacob and i will you know play songs together um he uh he got a bass and gave it to me and i learned how to play it so <laughs> <laughs> wow. that was actually part of like our how we got into making games was like we had an agreement where jacob was like you learn how to play bass and i'll help you make games um, <laughs> So, oh my um, gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, but uh, I would just, uh, once we kind of had like a visual direction for the game and sort of knew what 
close to the final product was going to look like. I just kind of would throw that up on a separate monitor and then I would be working on music on the, the other screen. Um, and I was just kind of like messing around with sounds until I just kind of like found something that really sounded like what I was looking at um, and felt like it worked well together. Um, so it was a very just like experimental process and finding the sound um, and then just sort of, you know, finding the right the right rhythms and the and the beats and everything, sort of making sure that the the energy matches with what's going on, and also creating an atmosphere that you know isn't too hyperactive or energetic, um, just because the game can be frustrating at times. You know, as if you're struggling to find a solution and you're you're dying over and over again, like you want something to kind of chill you out and mellow you out a little bit, um, as far as the audio goes. So interesting it's uh, good to understand uh what to expect uh with the soundtrack so uh, i like to i like to hear uh, people start when they when they compose mm -hmm. hey, ninja i'm gonna try to go ahead and put the trailer up again here okay um because last time i don't know why we couldn't hear any sound but people in the chat were definitely let us know in the chat we've got it completely muted playing here hopefully i don't hear a single thing but hopefully uh yeah chat as well because it's really awesome just to be able to see these, like these visuals like how the things just pop the bright colors i like the colors stand out yeah for sure so so you only win the stage when all walls are combined and when they're combined then you move to the next level is that That's what correct. i understood okay okay cool and how many levels is there in total uh, it's over 300 so uh you got 300 in the main wow. play and then you get uh an extra 25 like challenge levels um, yeah. and then on the vcs they've got 10 extra atari themed levels that oh, are man. special to them because i i think john <laughs> has a vcs right you, yep, you yep. I've got the uh, Atari vcs there a uh, lot of uh lucky. neat in indie games on that as well uh so yeah it was awesome and again, you know, le learning about, uh, you know, first hearing about Combinera back when it was coming out and, and things like that. So those, um, the levels that you're talking about, those are exclusive to the VCS or will they be in other versions as well? Currently they're exclusive. Um, okay. Don't know if Atari wants to ever change that. I'm open to it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're mostly fun, um, just kind of, um, uh, they kind of pay homage to some of the old, uh, Atari games and just very themed towards that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas the yeah. rest of it, you know, the Comet Air has to be its own thing. So. Yeah, the VCS is is kind of tempting to me because I do like the like the old arcade type of game, and uh, you know, I'm actually I actually have a, like all of the Amico games here uh, physically, and uh, looking forward for that to come out too. So uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, so I, I need to look more into the VCS. I haven't. I must admit that I did not look too much into it. So maybe I'll ask uh, John's opinion on, on the platform. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's like not officially released here in Canada as well. So oh. you, you'd have, oh. yeah, you have to buy it from the U.S. and get somebody to either ship it to you or Atari ships it to you. And then then you've got uh, duty and taxes and all that good stuff. Um, so I think we got one, maybe one last question here. That we asked before we let you go here marcus was wondering do you have any anticipated games like some of like you're looking forward to in the next maybe this year or next year yeah i mean i'm definitely looking forward to the new god of war um yeah i'm very that excited awesome, to play that yeah. game. so nice. that's one that's on my list i might have to play the world of warcraft lich king classic version i don't know that was uh <laughs> Was, wow. When I started playing games, that was like really that really sucked me in. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Well, we just want to say thank you so much, uh, Phil and Jacob, for taking your time here to talk with us today. We know you're very busy, um, and it was great to learn uh, about you, about Combinera, and uh, some of the advice you gave it was really fantastic. Um, just a big thank you so much for coming on the show here. We really appreciate it and looking forward to playing Combinera on Stadia in the next couple of months. Yeah, no, thank you for having us on. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah.
Definitely. Yeah, awesome. thanks so much. Yeah, and maybe we'll you... see you uh, with an interview with your next game, hopefully on yeah, Google you Stadium. Never know, right? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. So awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, that would be cool. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we're going to transition. We're saying goodbye and thank you to Jacob and Phil. And we're going to go on and talk a little bit about some news here. So again, thanks so much, Jacob, Phil. Have a great rest of the day and a, and a wonderful weekend. And we'll talk with you guys real soon. Thanks. Have a good one, guys. You guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah, man. Um, I, really I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's so strange. Like, I don't know why when I played the trailer here, I added the trailer and the sound, like everyone watching could hear the sound, even though I have it muted. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That That's that's weird. Yeah, I'm Hopefully not sure. it's just a little yeah. little glitch with Restream. Um, Ninja, I thought maybe we could go over uh, this week on Stadia blog post, and then maybe you could talk a little bit about the the uh community championship. championships it's I the always... cloud gaming championship summer 2022 John. it'll always be the Remember. summer community <laughs> championships to me but anyways yeah uh, yes i think uh that would be awesome yeah definitely okay, cool okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and share and let's get us over here and i want to get it a little bit bigger here it actually looks makes it look Okay, it looked like it was smaller. Okay, so um, this week, amongst all the various other shenanigans going on, um, we got uh, this week on Stadia blog post. And that means we also learned about August Pro Games. So yeah. let's go through this here. Uh, it looks like we are getting uh, six, two, four, six Pro Games for the month of August. Uh, the first one being, surprise, surprise, Saints Row the Third Remastered. Uh, we know that Saints Row is coming to Stadia on August the 23rd. So I think this is a perfect addition. I know, uh, Ninja, you were playing Saints Row the Third, was it just yesterday or last night you were uh, playing it? I was playing Saints Row 4 because it's oh. already on Pro. And yeah, uh, yeah I gave it a try. I have it on the hardest difficulty. And mm -hmm. oh man, it, it's so hard. Uh, but uh, no, really enjoying it. Uh, it's, it's a weird thing. I think that uh, they mentioned that it's going to be toned down, right? The, the remastered uh, of the next game. So I think I'm going to enjoy it more. The more seriousness of, of the of the next game. But uh, yeah, no, it's it, it's a very good port. They really did mm -hmm. a, you know a good job with my. There's no glitch or anything. So I really mm -hmm. enjoyed my time playing it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Monster Jam Steel Titans 2 is coming. I know Ray is super excited about that because his oh. son is a big Monster Jam. You know, the big monster trucks is is a big fan of those. And uh, Ray was telling us uh, over on Rock Show on Tuesday about how Ray had taken his son to, to see these monster trucks. And, you know, they were he was on the big screen and they talked to him and he got like, you know, I don't know, like a little prize or something like that. So it's really awesome. It, you know, these types of games are for all different types of people and ages and gaming abilities. So that is awesome to see. And I'm excited. I've played Monster Jam Steel Titans 2, but I'm excited for Ray's son on Monday to get his hands on that and, and play just because I know how it, how excited uh, mm. that he is and uh, to be able to play this game here. Do you know if uh, his son is going to play on stream or is he going to play? Uh, I don't know. Stream? That would be awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if Ray's listening or I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he's in the chat. He might catch the replay or whatever. Let us know. Drop us a tweet. That'd be awesome. Definitely would check that out. Yeah. Now, an another little game. We talked with the developers a couple of months ago. At that time, they hinted at uh, it being a Stadio Pro game for July. But lo and behold, Calico uh, is coming to Stadia August the 1st. Now, I know, Ninja, you you did pick this up on um, Nintendo Switch. <laughs> well, everything that, everything that have, you would have said, you would have been right. Because I got it on, on PC. I got the physical oh. copy on Switch. And I bought it on mm -hmm. Xbox also. Because, uh, oh, yeah, wow. I really, really enjoyed the game. I really recommend it. It's really fun. It's really cute. Awesome. And as you might know, I like cats. I really 
Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, it's it's the perfect game for me. It's it's so fun. It's so relaxing. I think it's mm-hmm. made, uh, you know, just to uh, relax and and take you know uh, forget all about other problems around you. It's the perfect game for that. Just you know, just play the game, enjoy whatever it's do- it's doing, and you know, it, it's really good. Highly recommended. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I was, to be honest with you, like the amount of positive feedback we got during when we did the interview, because normally you would think like some people were like, oh, well, this type of game, it's a cat game, blah, 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 this and that. But people are really genuinely excited for it. And that that makes me happy, too, because seeing people like yourself enjoying a variety of different types of games is so awesome because you're not just, you know, you don't just are, are fixated on, oh, well, this is a girl's game, right? You yeah, know, yeah. You, you could easily say that, oh, well, this game is made for girls or what. Well, you know what? It, it's not. And it's great to see people are excited for it. So that will be the third game uh, in Stadia Pro Library in August, come Monday, August the 1st. Yeah. And uh, even um, we have Fletch here, who is, you know, like he, he's a hardcore gamer. I think he's like a better game. Like he's very good at games. He's better mm-hmm. than me, I think. And he says that he personally, you know, not a big fan of, of this uh, month's pro, but he's mm-hmm. really looking for it for Calico too. So oh. your point, your point is proven, right? Like it, it anybody can play this game. Mm-hmm. Like it's just made for anyone. So it's awesome yep. to see. Well, and our uh, we just talked with Way Forward not too long ago here, and sure enough, Shante Half Genie Hero ultimate edition is coming to stadia pro and i remember when we had our little chat um he said that their their goal is to bring all their games to stadia pro so mm-hmm. this is awesome uh another shante half genie hero ultimate edition uh it looks beautiful it's a great platformer i don't know ninja have you had a chance to to play it um... i finished uh the other one uh risky's revenge Mm-hmm. And I was really waiting for Pirate's Curse to come out before because it's, it's mm-hmm. the game in between uh, this uh, uh, and Half Genie Hero. Mm-hmm. But since mm-hmm. this one is free, uh, you know, I'm going to have to give it a try because, yeah, like I really like these games. They're, they're awesome. really fun. Yeah, I, I could I could, I could, could see you enjoying this, like the challenge. I know you love a good yeah. challenge. Yeah. So I know this is something you'd probably really enjoy. Now, here's another game, Ninja. I don't know. This might be before um, we started talking to each other on a regular basis. Murder by Numbers. Um, I purchased that and streamed it and was totally lost with really? the little puzzles that, that came in it. I don't know. Do you know anything about the game or have, have you seen it before? Or Well, I think it got out around when I started to enjoy Stadia, when I started to actually you know actively play it. So I mm-hmm. didn't. I didn't see your stream. Sadly, I, yep. <laughs> I, I don't think. Yeah, I think yeah, it, it happened beforehand. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't had a chance to play it, but I've seen what it is, and I'm very interested about it. I, I really yeah. want to give it a try. And yeah, it's I. You know, and maybe uh, you know you'll do a lot better than me. It's like a visual novel mixed with puzzles. It's like kind of. I don't know, like the puzzles in there. If they're like pick cross or peak cross, I don't know how. However you pronounce it, you know me. I'm horrible with names but i just couldn't even with the chat help i couldn't yeah. figure it out so i was like oh. struggling in my hour stream here okay, okay I'll be so honest with you i so never went back to it <laughs> it's basically it's just because you're not familiar with the picross rules well, okay yeah okay. yeah and just, i think yeah. i think that's what it is so there were there was these various different rules and and if yeah. it's here then you go there and i it didn't connect for me but, uh, you know, it would be awesome, you know, if this is a game that you end up uh, playing and, and liking. I would love to watch a, a stream of it and just, you know, who knows, maybe you can send me to school and I'll learn how to play it. And who knows, maybe we'll be a month later here and I'll be saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ninja Guy yeah. told, me, uh, sh- told me how or showed me how to play Murder by Numbers uh, yeah. because the story is very interesting. And I love like the art and stuff that surround it. Yeah. By it, it's just those puzzles for me that were were very frustrating. Yeah, I played a lot uh, of Picross in the, in mm-hmm. my young days. So uh, maybe I sh- I'll be able to 
to progress through this game. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you'll just be the first one I stream also. Because yeah, yeah, now that you mentioned that, I'm kind of interested in giving it a yeah. try. Yeah. Awesome. And our sixth game, I'm not going to say final because sometimes we get <laughs> stealth drops. So the sixth yeah. game announced is Welcome to Elk. And this is another hidden gem on Stadia. I'm so glad to see this to come to Stadia Pro. It's a more mature and adult theme story for sure because there's you know strong language in it and there's some adult situations i wouldn't say you know there's not anything like i would say that's like filthy but like some of the stuff that they talk about you really wouldn't want your kids or younger to hear and the story is really really good on the game here mm -hmm. so i think it was just one that kind of you know got looked over uh, by a lot of people. So now coming to Stadia Pro, more people can enjoy it. So uh, that's, I, I'm really awesome. Like, it's really awesome to see that uh, that game is coming to Stadia Pro in August. And like we said, who knows? There might be uh, another game drop. We learned today uh, Yars Recharged uh, is coming out on yeah. August the 23rd by Atari. So. Is that going to be maybe it's a, you know, a, a, a surprise Stadia Pro game? Because, again, just like Centipede Recharge, it it's a perfect Stadia Pro title because it's something you're going to go back to and back to over and over and over again. And we know from the scientists and his data, Raphael, that uh, developers can make quite a bit of money, a nice tidy sum through Stadia Pro. So fingers crossed that uh yars recharged is going to be a yeah. stadia pro title but we never know right who knows yeah i'm happy that so far atari is doing well because that means that maybe we'll be seeing even more titles from them right like yes. maybe they, they'll partner up and do and release like all the vcs uh games uh mm -hmm. you know uh, at yeah. the same time so hopefully yeah yeah, I mean, there's always a an audience for even not doing like the recharge games, even the old retro games like yeah. that. We know there's yeah. an audience for it. And even if they throw it into pro, sure. Mm -hmm. Or that they price them like, you know, super cheap, that would be good. So who knows? You know, yeah. maybe maybe we'll see more from Atari. Yeah. But we did see that tweet that more games are coming to Stadia from Atari. So I don't know if that's referencing stuff that hasn't been announced yet or yeah. that just, you know, more coming this fall. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know... yeah, we, yeah, exactly. And uh, I know that there's a game announced on Atari that you were looking, you're maybe like looking forward to, right? Yeah. I, I can never re remember the name of Def Alive yeah. is in the chat here. He'll know it's a, it's to celebrate the Atari 50th anniversary. It's like WarioWare. All these oh, little man. mini micro games from all the Atari IPs over the years. It hasn't been announced for Stadia and it's supposed to come in the summer. So that would be awesome. Could it be a Stadia Pro surprise title? Sure. Oh, I hope so. I mean, there's been yeah. no indication. So we'll want to make that clear, right? There's no mm -hmm. indication that they've said it's even coming or it's going to be pro. This is just me, you know, speculating and wondering if this would be cool. Yeah. It would make financial sense. So, who knows? Um, I always love these stealth Stadia Pro drops and uh, even games like uh, Forgotten City. We didn't, Nobody had any idea that that was coming to Stadia. And we just hear Tuesday, yep, it's coming on Thursday. So it came out yesterday. Um, and it was, we learned in the chat uh, from Paul on Rock Show that uh, it was formerly a Skyrim mod. That's now turned into a fully fledged game. Ninja, you streamed this a couple of times in the short time that the game's been out, just a day or two. Um, what what are your thoughts on it so far? How are you enjoying it? And yeah, and you know, be interested to see what you think. So uh, the game came out, yeah, like a few last year, maybe even. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's uh, and I've always been interested by it. Uh, Watching the trailer at first, I thought that it was like a detective game, and my spouse is a big fan. Like she loved the new uh, Sherlock Holmes that came out. Mm -hmm. She she's been mm -hmm. playing. Like we're on vacation this, this weekend, she's been playing all week. And uh, awesome. but anyway, yeah. So I was so that's why I was intrigued. So maybe it's a game for my spouse, and so 
finally we're i'm able to to give it a try and this the story at first i was like it, you know like it has to have a good story for me to to like it because there's a lot of dialogue and, yeah. and you know the first hour was you know it's building up it's building up and this morning i, I played it more and oh my gosh it just goes crazy like it it just gets really interesting and you're really curious to see what's going to happen at the end so it, it's very well made and uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah especially especially the, the story is is what grabs you in this game and uh, the fact that it's like the same kind of graphic as skyrim you know the same kind of dialogue and stuff it, it's kind of cool to see you know uh, them using that type of uh of mechanics yeah that's awesome so marcus here in the chat oh. saying forgotten city landed on its one year anniversary so that's awesome now, Ninja, I saw that you posted a tweet. I didn't click on it yet. Something <laughs> yeah. about this is what happens when you try and steal something and get yeah. away with it. Can you maybe tell us about that? Or, well, um, I, you know, like if I should have put spoiler, I guess, on the Twitter, but I don't want to talk too much about it because okay. Uh, okay. it could be yeah. in spoiler uh, territories. Yeah. Okay. But okay. But, yeah. yeah we'll like here. I, I, I thought, yeah, I thought that I, I like I, I stole something and I, I thought I was clear. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but no, no, I wasn't clear. Like something terrible happened to me. And, yeah, oh it, it was gosh. a pretty much a holy crap uh, type of moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and I know before we go on to uh, more things here, oh, Mark wow. was saying, do we know if Arcade Paradise from Wired is coming? I haven't heard anything. It would be cool. Yeah. Again, it would fit right in with these, yeah. you know, retro games and art arcade type mm -hmm. games which i think like a lot of people really enjoy they're making a, a comeback so um yeah, yeah that, that's yeah awesome. i was able to try the beta and i, I streamed mm -hmm. it a little bit and uh it's yeah it's really fun i really hope it comes to stadia <laughs> yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah. Yeah. saying the reaction was hilarious yeah. also <laughs> yeah. did that too <laughs> yeah oh, yeah they really like the way they did that is so good like you don't you think you think like huh Everything is fine. And then like, <laughs> like, oh man, everything goes insane. Yeah. It's That's so awesome. crazy. And it came out too at a, a great price. I think it's even cheaper than on other platforms. Maybe other platforms might have a sale, but anyways, it came out at a really great price. So um, I haven't picked it up yet, um, but I plan on doing so. We also got, and it's not listed in here. Uh, they didn't mention it in the blog post. Right. Another stealth release from our good friends at Handy Games. Now, the name is... is n n name name something. Name name from Back from Hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had never... Apparently, this is a remake of a game. I had never heard or yeah. played it before. H had you? No, not at all. But it really gives the vibe of like these old early 2000 kind of games right like mm -hmm. or, or maybe even 90s uh, yeah, yeah yeah for sure because it, it kind of to me i don't know if you play this um back way it was actually on well actually you had a commodore right so maybe yeah. you play the spy versus spy it kind of reminds oh, yeah. me a, a yeah. little bit you know you're not controlling two different people or or setting the booby traps but i don't know it, it just kind of gives me that vibe mm -hmm. um and it's a great again another Greatly priced game, easy there, impulse buy. There's also a game on Genesis. Like, I, it's been so long since I've seen it. But there's a game in Genesis. It's like kind of like a parallel kind of game. Like it's like like a like kind of 3D, and you mm -hmm. have to go in different part of the house and get trapped. Uh, put, put traps, I think, or you have to be careful and not get trapped. But it's been Ooh. so long. I don't remember the name of the game or like you know what it is. Uh, but uh, yeah. it really reminded me of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, we got the uh, in the blog here. Uh, more information. FIFA 23. We talked about it last week. Officially confirmed. Coming to Stadia, September 30th. Or if you buy the Ultra Mac Daddy version, uh, it's you can play it three days earlier, September 27th. Uh, it's cross-play with uh, the Stadia versions, cross-play with PC, Series X, and PS5, which is fantastic. And the PS4 and Xbox One are cross-play with each other. So previous generation plays. And we've seen this like with NHL on uh, PS5 and Series X that you could play, you know, with those, the modern, the current generation, and last-gen plays with the last generation. So... 
it's great news. Uh, FIFA's coming, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be excited for that. Yeah. Uh, they even got the, the trailer here and whatnot. Um, there we go. 17 more new trials have come to Stadia. This is as of Tuesday. There might have been more. <laughs> so um, yeah, and this is awesome because there's well over, I think if I saw Jack's post, there's 123 or there might oh, wow. even be more now. Uh, and, and you can see like even stuff like Farming Simulator, you get 180 minutes. So that's what, 60, 60 is 120, three hours to play wow. Farming Simulator to really dig into the game here. Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4, you get two hours, which is great because you really need it in that type of game. Steam World High, 60 minutes. Like, this is so awesome. I think what's going to eventually happen is pretty much every single game on Stadia <laughs> is going to get a free trial. And they'll start launching. Like, when a game launches on Stadia, it'll also have a trial. So that, that is, cool. is awesome, yeah. right? Like, you know, just like Paul, I saw Paul in the chat here saying, oh, you know, he was interested in that handy game, but wasn't sure. Well, imagine if they just put the trial on there, even a 30 minute trial, Paul tries it, says, yeah, I'll buy it. You know what I mean? Like this, that would be, would be awesome. We can see a uh, hundred days is in there trying for Everspace Figment, which we know Figment 2 is coming mid-october i believe so that'll be awesome it's just great to see power rangers too like there's so like we said over a hundred different games that you can try for free all without even to have a stadia account it is mm -hmm. awesome like that is freaking that. awesome yeah, yeah definitely um and then we are our PUBG aficionados love this one here i seen a lot of chatter about this destin is a new map that's out um on PUBG, and uh, wow, it's just I've seen like Ray and Cloud Validation and, and various others um, talk about this, and you know, just having tons of fun here. So it's awesome to see PUBG getting new content um, throughout the years here, and people are really excited for it. So, really good to see here, um, and then. Uh, we opened off uh, the show with the tweet from Shaka, <laughs> but this is what she was re also referencing to Wave Tail. Uh, it's still on Stadia Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but if you don't have Stadia Pro, you can play it all weekend from July 28th, so yesterday, Thursday, until Monday. And you know what? You could finish the game in exactly. the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's about <clears throat> at most, let's say, ten hours give or take here or there depending but you definitely could play and beat the game i love the story it's in that fun. game yeah oh my gosh so i hope fun. we see more this would be uh a franchise i would love to see continue great storytelling great voice acting some funny things and just it looks beautiful and plays awesome so check that out if you haven't already wave tail great great game uh, and here's a game as we, I remember, oh, this might be a year ago or so Phoenix point. He was talking about, uh, Phoenix point and, and wasn't sure about buying it. I think he ended up did buying it, but we now have the complete edition, which includes everything, right? Everything mm -hmm. released there, all the DLC updates, all that good stuff. So if you're a fan of, uh, XCOM, because the creator of XCOM, uh, helped make this game here. Phoenix Point, check it out. Uh, it's a it's a it's a really fun game, and with all the content, I think it's it's a great great buy. Reasonable price too. I think it's like fifty yeah. bucks Canadian, if I'm not mistaken, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's what it is. Forty US, fifty Canadian, something like that as well. So great if you like those uh, real time strategy games. Uh, and then finally to cl close it off for our Destiny Two. Fans here, Stolsis event is in full swing. Now, I played Destiny 2 here or there and uh, did a stream or two. Not, you know, I'm I like it, but I'm not a super big fan. But what I've heard is in this, this is a, like a yearly event. That's called the Solstice event, happens every year. This year, they've added or sprinkled in some minor microtransactions, <laughs> I think. So, there was a little bit of talk about that. 
um, with some people that didn't like that. But I think generally overall, people are really happy with that. So uh, that was uh, the blog post for this week, uh, this week on Stadia. So pretty decent there. Some great news, some stealth drops. Uh, we learned the Stadia Pro games. So excited. I think August is going to be a good month. Uh, Yaris Recharged, definitely. Saints Row, really looking for that, forward mm -hmm. to that. And uh we even know uh, there may even be some other games announced that we don't even know of. So, yeah, it's gonna be uh, awesome to look forward to. They're getting pretty, uh, pretty back on track. There, we're getting a lot of new games and uh, some very exciting games too. So it, mm -hmm. it's, it's very yeah. cool because I think like the first four months was a little bit slow. But, yeah, yeah, uh, the first four, four months was slow there, and I think now with July, eleven games released in July. Yeah. So it's tracking now back on if I'm remember correctly it's tracking the same as or a little bit above 2020 exactly so i know mm -hmm. people were worried um about it but you know what like if you look around in the industry in general you also see that on other platforms too um obviously they're not going to be affected as much as stadia because they're well established platforms and have a lot of support in our traditional but, you know, other other platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, I know someone was crying about, you know, triple A's or whatever for Xbox for the rest of the year. And, you know, so there are, again, various other platforms that are, you know, experiencing a reduced amount of games. Um, and I think we're just feeling it a little bit more on Stadia just because of it's a newer platform and, you know, still people are unsure about cloud gaming and, and things like that yeah yeah it, it's it's something for sure um i mean the expansion of mexico will definitely help um and hopefully we'll get some expansion in other countries too some popular ones right uh, yeah yeah because uh, I, I i i think so because we're starting to see like more stock of like playstation 5's xbox series x and things like that. So while there are still there are still like droughts or restrictions, or there's still some of the hardware is hard to get. I think it's slowly starting to ease up. So I think we will see. Maybe I got my fingers crossed here. Maybe one other country after Mexico this year. I would love it for it to be like Japan. Or yeah. India, Brazil. Okay, I think for me, <laughs> if I'm going out on a limb here, oh, it's a yeah. big toss up between Brazil and Japan because mm -hmm. Japan, if Stadia expanded to Japan, then you can get uh, more, Japan I think, more right? of the Japanese developers like Q Games, right? Yeah, Our good exactly. Friends over there, right? Mm -hmm. to, because they made the game completely over in Japan, but they weren't, they aren't able to my understanding to play it on Stadia through the cloud. They could just play like local versions and things like that. Exactly. So I'm thinking, okay, Brazil are super hungry for uh, cloud gaming. And we've seen that with GeForce now with uh, uh, Xbox cloud gaming all like when they launch their having like huge wait times because it's being overloaded with the amount of people. So I'm trying to balance it between there's a lot of people there in Brazil that want it, but then in Japan too, maybe you get more developers. So I don't know. I'd be happy with, with either Brazil or Japan, or who knows, maybe even something else that we don't even know yet. So who knows? You know, yeah. It but would be it, awesome. I'm, I agree. Japan would be one of the best because there are already developers developing for stadia so so why not right like mm -hmm. then the fans of the, the, these developers in their country they can't play the, the mm -hmm. exclusive game so right exactly yeah great but uh mm -hmm. like you said brazil brazil is uh, a big one just because of you know they lack the hardware and you know the, yeah. the, the funding so and everything the money, is so. so expensive there yeah yeah exactly yeah. so it would be perfect that would be awesome yeah. mm -hmm. all right so uh we want to talk about one last thing here and it is the so, so what it is, John? What is the exact? <laughs> it's name? the Summer Community Championship on Stadia. I'm an old fogey. I go play bingo. I played last day. I didn't win. I had to take a nap after I got home. But you know what? 
I don't care. <laughs> it'll always be it'll always be the summer community championship on Stadia. But uh, no, seriously, Cloud yeah. Gaming Championship Stadia Summer Twenty Two. It'll just take me a while. By the time it's over, I'll remember it, and then we'll be on to the winter, right? Yeah, I had to remember it just because you know I was uh, streaming some stuff and you mm -hmm. know like advertising, so mm -hmm. I, it kind of got stuck in my head. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll get there for you too. So we are currently at week two, and the challenge week. this week is Centipede Recharged. Uh, we got uh, week three announced, which is Creta. Uh, we did not mention what is the challenge yet, but uh, uh, I personally know um, Jack is taking care of that challenge. So look forward mm -hmm. to see uh, you know when he'll be announcing it, uh, and then week four uh, to be announced. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, something very interesting is in in the finals, uh, whoever Whoa. wins and uh, whoever is in the, the the last round will be able to play a game that is not released on Stadia yet. So Whoa. they'll have That's access amazing. to yeah to play something very cool. Uh, we're not going to say more than that for now. But uh, mm -hmm. when I've heard that that we were you know getting to play this game, uh, I, it was amazing. Like I was very excited about it. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be cool. Uh, so awesome. let's jump, yeah, let's jump into week two and see what is the um, the challenge. So what you need to do is go in the pyramid challenge, uh, which is it looks like this here. It's the first challenge when you go uh, select the the challenges basically. But there is a twist. Uh, what you have to do here usually is get the highest score as fast as you can. But this time around, what you have to do is. Uh, survive the longest as you can and this is really hard because if you hit some stuff your score will will uh, you know go higher and higher so you got to be careful not to hit too many things but at the same time you gotta you know uh, make sure to clear out a little bit so you don't get hit so if if you have a game over your score doesn't count so you have to survive as long as you oh. can but your score has to be filled up so it's it's a very hard challenge. <laughs> As you can I, see now here. I wonder who created such a hard challenge. Do you know? <laughs> uh, it depends. Are you in favor of it? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I created this challenge. Um, you know, I wanted to do a little bit uh, something a little bit different. Uh, I can't say what the scores are at the moment, but some people okay. had some amazing strategies. Is all I'm gonna say. And uh, Monday, me and John are actually gonna host all of these runs together, and you'll be able yep. to see, uh, you know, who win and wh what kind of strategy they use. It's it's very impressive. Uh, now, yeah. So now, far, I, I, it, yeah. I, I was gonna say, if I'm not mistaken, did Jack or maybe the uh, Summer Community Championship Twitter account announce about an extension for week two? Yes, that's correct. So um, uh, the first week we had some feedback. Uh, people were not crazy about the challenges ending on Saturday. So we just, uh, they'd rather have like the whole weekend to, to actually play. So starting week two, we do uh, we end the challenge on Sunday at midnight uh, Pacific time. So nice. you have a, a, an extra day. So some people, you know, they, they have all of their gaming time on Sunday. So it's going to help them. A, a mm -hmm. little bit so uh yeah we all decided to uh to extend that uh, awesome yeah exactly so this is why we're gonna uh you know host it on, on monday because uh the challenge will not be done yet uh, during the weekend man mm -hmm. so i did some streaming uh was it tuesday i think it was tuesday and i, I did try the challenge as, as best as i can and I couldn't get a, like more than like two minutes and 50 seconds it's really hard <laughs> I kept dying I feel like four minutes is possible uh yeah. but uh yeah like oh my gosh it's so hard if you like you know if you don't have any strategies or anything like it's mm. it's pure survival <laughs> yeah so uh i think that's all we have to talk about here for uh, the challenge you have to submit your score uh if you want to participate you have to make sure that you record your video and just you know put your score in and you're good to go so looking forward to see you know the results of this how many people will get wow. this crazy score and uh, be first in the in the game um john do you know if the first position every week gets uh, a price i can't remember yeah i think um is it oh yeah there you go is it is it 50 right yeah 50 yeah. uh first place will get 50 dollars, and the second 
place will get $25 in uh, Google Play credit or PayPal. Oh, nice. Um, That's awesome. So, it, you know, it's, it's a good way to try to get to be first. You don't need to be first to be in the finals because we picked the top 16. But, right. uh, you know, it's a good incentive to you know, give it a try, do your best and try to win these uh, these crazy yeah. amount, uh, these crazy uh, scores. Yeah. And, and the best thing is it's absolutely free, right? It doesn't yeah. cost anything to sign up. There's no event fee or entrance yeah. fee or anything like that. Um, and you could just head on over to stadiadosage.com for all the information and the details. That's where it's on now. And uh, definitely, uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter, or wherever, or the uh, Cloud Gaming Championship Twitter account. Jack, you know, a bunch of different people. If you ever have any questions, there's also official Discord. I think is there a link there? That uh, has? I think it's there that's, somewhere. That's a good question. But if you don't see it, uh, you can just contact us, and we'll, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll get it to oh, you. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, see yeah. Discord. Oh, no, this Twitter. is Reddit. Uh, no, go if you go up one right there. See, it says Discord. Oh, right? Discord. There, there you go. go. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. So you got all the and there's people on there to help talk with, chat with, and <laughs> and I know I've seen various people tweeting out that they're streaming. You know, their entry into this week and people. What I love, Ninja, is that people that are in part of this tournament are are willing. You know, they're not being secretive, right? Like they're yeah. willing to help others. They're, so, they're very much helping each other, which is yeah. very cool to see, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, people helping out each other. So so it really comes down to whoever has the best skills to to execute whatever strategy that they, you know, that they discuss between each other. Um, mm -hmm. I see the German um, community, uh, especially, they help each other a lot. They're very, very mm -hmm. focused in the, the championship, which is very cool to see them, you know, team up and, and figure out all of these of these things. That's awesome. Awesome yep. to see here. We got Fletch here asking, can I still get in the last 16 if I miss the first week? Yeah, definitely, uh, Fletch. There's still a lot of chance. Um, I think even, I know that in uh, the first championship, um, uh, wait, geez, Gem, Gem, geez, I'm having a, a blank. Gem <laughs> uh, only participated on the last week and he got first place. So he basically uh, ended up in the finals. So mm -hmm. you still have a, a big chance. You can. Go ahead and give it a try right now with even with week two or week three even if you just put yeah. a score you have a chance to go in the the top 16 so uh, definitely give yeah. it a try yeah i think fletch has uh, a good chance like you said if he even submits a, a an entry for centipede here yeah you know he still got until what sunday midnight pacific so still another almost what basically yeah. like two days anyways right so yeah that that's like uh, in the morning for, for him, I think. So all nighter for, for Fletch to get a, a score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'll be like in the old days where, you know, you had your head up close to the, the TV here playing your games and, and arcades. Like yeah. 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 But it's, it's so awesome to see and hear people having fun with this community event. And I really hope to see a lot more like this because it just helps bring people together. And, you know, like we've mentioned too, like, you know, I was introduced to you through basically through yeah. a year ago right? on the last year's event. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and so many, March? so many new yeah. people. Mm -hmm. No, uh, well, that no, was around we, July. You're right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's just like so many new and different people from all around the world uh, is well competed. Um, even what in this last the winter one. We had uh, in the finals there. It was so it was awesome. It was like a nail biter. So I'm looking forward to Monday on your channel, uh, chatting with you, commenting on you know this week's entries and and seeing what kind of like weird things because I know we are gonna find and watch people that are come up with like some weird different strategy. Like, you know, like we did with Wreckfest in the winter, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you were saying like, you go around this corner and if you like bump this certain way or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it, yeah. you knew that if in the first corner or the first couple of corners, if you didn't do this, you didn't have a shot, right? So exactly. obviously people are gonna come up with these weird and different strategies for Centipede Recharge. You would think like, well, what could they come up with? But I, I'm positive we're gonna we're gonna see and be witness to yeah. uh, some some awesome gameplay. When I I did the challenge, 
I was worried because these people, they, they really go ahead and, and find crazy ways to, to do things. And I was, I was right to, 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 to think that because they did find like some kind of crazy <laughs> way to, to, you know, to have a good score. So, uh, mm -hmm. but it's going to be cool to see uh, to see that live. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And that again, that'll be Monday on your channel. If you haven't yep. already follow yep. Ninja, I've got his, I've got your, your link to all the, your social stuff and, and everything in um, the description and also the bot's been mentioning it as well. Uh, awesome. So definitely check out uh, Ninja and all these, your awesome different, various different streams you have. Are you going to be streaming more of Forgotten City? Yeah, uh, I'm planning uh, on doing three more streams for it. Um, wow. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it awesome. goes. Uh, may, maybe more. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but five for sure. Uh, I, yeah, I've been pretty active this week. I've played a lot of stuff. Uh, That's awesome. I'll probably slow down a little bit uh, on the uh, coming weeks. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. So um, on Monday, the stream is for Centipede is going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, right, mm -hmm. John? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. And uh, yeah, we're, John is going to come with me. We're going to host. We're going to have some fun, laugh, uh, yeah. talk about uh, people's strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, be sure to join in. It's going to be awesome. awesome. So, so as we're wrapping it up here, Ninja, the so you're you're going to be streaming Forgotten City about three more times. Does that mean we're going to see a review of the game somewhere? Can we look forward to that, or am I'm, I just wishful thinking? I'm debating. Like, the, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure yet. I, I want. Okay, I, I don't okay. know if I, yeah if I want to do it or not. I okay. I'm recording the videos as if I would be doing a review, uh, but. Uh, I'm thinking about it. We'll see. You know, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because again, um, people may not realize it's a lot of work that goes into that. Like, it's yeah. not just you know, if your let's say your review is five to seven minutes, it's not five to seven minutes <laughs> worth of work. It's no. hours of at work. least three You're hours. Or more. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. plus all your streaming, um, right? Yeah. The yeah. edit, the editing, your script, all that good stuff. So it is mm -hmm. a lot of work. So yeah. uh, who knows? Yeah. Maybe Ninja. I mean, if I get good vibes from uh, you know yeah. the supporters, uh, mm -hmm. I could totally uh, get the uh, you know the uh, hype to do it basically. So yeah, yeah. if you guys yeah. are interested in seeing a review, just let me know, and uh, you know it'll definitely help help me in making my decision for sure. Okay, so I see I, there's there's two other things I want to talk about, but I just saw this in the chat here. Mostly Martinez says, John. I gotta know, did you run or walk to the ice cream man as a kid? So I posted a tweet. Um, growing up here um, in Ontario, in Canada, um, back in the 80s, what they had, instead of an ice cream truck, we had something called the Dickie D Man. <laughs> and I know it sounds weird, but it was this, it was, it was generally like a high school student, right? Or someone in their early 20s, you know, just getting a job. Instead of a McDonald's, in the summer, they would get a job, the Dickie D man. And it was like a, it was on a bike and they had like ice cream that they, a, a big uh, thing in the front where refrigerated, where they sold ice cream, like ice cream sandwiches, things like that. So kids would always run out and, you know, instead of the ice cream truck, it was the Dickie D man. So... <laughs> So that that's what he's he's referring to here. Um, we have yeah, we have. Uh, I'm seeing Bjorn here. We have weird thing in Canada. We have also Mister uh, was it Mister Rogers or Mister uh, Mister Dress Up, Mister Dress Up, yeah. And he had the tickle trunk. Uh, yeah, that he was exactly, like picking up right? stuff from it. Yeah, <laughs> he has some weird I, stuff in Canada. Uh, I love the tickle trunk here. So I'm just going to. Uh, just for the heck of it here. Let me just share my screen real quick. And then we'll okay. talk. I want to talk about next week's shows because we have two shows for 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 next week. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I'm very excited for next week uh, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to let John talk about it. But uh, man, it's it's we're going to build up some, some, yeah, some cool it, it's, shows. Yeah, it's going to be awesome here. OK, and. So here we go. Here's the awesome tweet I tweeted. And I just happened. To, <laughs> I don't know why it's showing both screens here. But anyways, over here, this is the Dickie D man. You can see Dickie D ice cream. And it's like some high school guy just like riding down the street. And you could buy like fudgicles, uh, 
popsicles and things like that. You can see it's like 30, 40 cents. So it was just funny. Dickie D, man, it was awesome. But uh, <laughs> but other than that, other than talking about the Dickie D, man here, because uh, that kind of sounds a little strange. Next week, I'm just getting this um, uh, set up here. Okay, so next week we have two awesome shows. They're going to be developer uh, interviews and... They are developers that we talked to prior. I'm not going to say who, but they're coming back to give us updates uh, on the games with some exciting news. So there's going to be two of them. The first one is going to be on Wednesday, August the 3rd. And it's going to be right around about 4.15. We're trying to get as much time as we can. Um, we... Ninja and I both finish our day jobs about 15 minutes prior. So we're trying to see if we can get it as much time uh, with this individual as possible. So Wednesday, you'll you'll obviously you'll hear tweets about it. We're definitely going to be announcing it on Discord and, and Twitter and all that good stuff. Wednesday, there'll be a developer interview. Someone's coming back to give us uh, an update. And Friday as well. Um, another developer's coming and we will also have, it'll be Ninja and I on both of those and we'll have some other guest co-hosts as well on each of those. So definitely you won't want to miss them. I know a lot of people are going to be excited, uh, about the news here that we are, we're, we're learning about. And you know what, even some of it, like we, we don't even know yet what the specifics are but we know that it's going to be awesome and amazing so check it out wednesday 4 15 p.m eastern and then friday will be our regular time at 4 30 two uh more awesome developer interviews with updates and uh yeah it's it's gonna be great yep very exciting uh you guys uh will be hearing some pretty cool news uh next week so uh you know we have that's all we're gonna say but uh uh, really keep it keep an eye out next week we'll have yeah. some very cool stuff to talk about uh stadium yeah. related yes yeah definitely for sure all righty well i think that's gonna wrap us up here uh again shout out to uh our good friends uh combinera i had to think about that our yeah. developers here jacob and phil that was uh amazing to be able to talk to them and learn about them and then this last hour, we had lots of news and interesting things and opinions and stuff like that, which I love doing. And again, Ninja, like I say, every week, I always look forward to this show. Doing the show um, is so much fun. And just everyone in the chat and you know, like talking to developers, too, and just talking about the news and finding out, you know, what you think or what I think or what the chat thinks about it. And, you know, it's always a fantastic. I always look forward to whenever we have the shows here. So really excited for Wednesday and Friday next week as well. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, thank you for, for having me on the show. It's so much oh, fun. I, I really enjoy uh, doing the show with you, John. Uh, yeah. I see MM2K here. Yeah, Essence. Oh, there uh, he is. time. Oh, shoot. That's not the right one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I enjoy doing uh, the, the Studio Dosage SSC podcast with MM2K too mm -hmm. back uh, back in the day. Really enjoying yep. it. But uh, yeah, we're going to uh, really looking forward for next week also. Awesome. All righty. And with that, we will say a goodbye to everybody. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we'll see you all again real soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.